Here we are back again. This is uh, the first thing, maybe, that the Lord showed me after I finally committed my heart to the Lord in, in realization that God's Word is preserved in the King James Bible. I'm going to reference a couple of past videos first. My very first video I ever made was Romans 8, 1 compared. You can look that up in my videos. That was the first thing the Lord ever showed me regarding His Word. It was in a time where I'd started reading His Word again, and I, and I at different times over the course of a, of a number of years, I had uh, notions, wondering, hmm, I wonder, you know, if there is anything to that, God's Word being the King James Bible. So that was the first thing the Lord showed me. Second thing the Lord showed me was the thing regarding the parable of the sower, which I also made a video of, just uh, about March of 2008, and that video is here on YouTube. You can look in my videos and look up or type in parable of the sower, or just parable, and, um, and you'll see that video. And then there's one called Luke uh, 23 something or other, and um, so let's type in Luke 23, or the other passage that's referenced in that video is Acts 8.37, because that was another instance that the Lord showed me in a very simple way. When I was over there clipping some bushes next to my house, and a, uh, either a Mormon or a Jehovah's Witness guy came along, and I saw it. Who's the ones that use the New World Translation? Anyways, I looked in his New World Translations, which is a perversion from the Alexandrian texts, just as all the modern versions are, all from the Alexandrian texts. Um, and they all have their own goofed up deals you know that they have okay so here's the thing that the lord showed me uh well, well there was one other instance I, I mentioned this in another video it was the one where the gideon guy gave me a hard time for bringing king james testaments to a distribution at a christian school of all things that was in um december of 07 and that was before i started making youtube videos and uh so i i thank that instance for helping me to start doing this little ministry but that was the final straw because at that point the only one that was left and all the ones that I'd kind of been learning sort of somewhat one at a time I mean there's okay because because after the Romans 8 1 instance the first time I started going through different versions whenever I'd see them I'd sort of take note and I'd look in there and I'd say okay let's see what this one says and I'd go to Romans 8 1 that was sort of like my point of contact so anyways, after this instance with the Gideon guy and the, the, the New King James, and with the New King James, I found out Matthew 7, 14, totally whacked. That's all I need to know. I don't need to go searching out the thing for finding other errors, even though it's got a bunch that I've learned of since. You know, that's the one that I stick to. I go to wrote Matthew 7, 14. Wrong the way it's written there. All right. Okay, so the, the next time the Lord showed me something, I was reading you know, in my Bible reading. And one day uh, I had this notion, and the Lord gave me this notion. Because I didn't know what I was coming up on, you know, in my reading. I wasn't that familiar with First Samuel at the time. And I, I was thinking about those Alexandrian texts. That's the only name you got to know, because those are the bad ones. The Alexandrian texts. Alexandria is in Egypt, um, which we'll comment on in another video, that, the point of that. But this particular instance, I, I thought to the Lord, I thought, you know, Lord, why didn't you just have those Alexandrian texts just burn up? You know, like an Indiana Jones movie where they, where, you know, the, you remember the part where they, they got the Ark of the Covenant in the crate, and, uh, and all of a sudden, you know, there's these mice climbing around the crate and stuff, and all of a sudden there's this real ominous sound, of boom, 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 and then, and then the, the Savastika there, and it goes, it sizzles up and burns away, and the, the mouse is going, eh. And so I thought, why didn't you just do that to the Alexandrian text? Kaboosh! Burn them up! Burn up those false texts that were found in the bottom of the Vatican. The Vaticanus, which were also part of the Alexandrian line. And I thought, why? And the next day I read 1 Samuel 5. Now you're going to have to look it up, because I, I only have a, a New Testament here with me. But um, In 1 Samuel 5, it talks about where the Ark of the Covenant was stolen away from the children of Israel. And um, I thought, wow, why did that, why was that allowed to happen? And then the Lord made me realize 
because the children of Israel didn't care anymore. They, if they cared about the Ark of the Covenant, would it have ever been taken from them? No. But God allowed it to be taken from them because they didn't care. And they put it in the, in the room with the statue of Dagon. And the next day they find Dagon falling over. So they're like, oh my, they put it back up. The next day, Dagon falling over again. His head was off and his hands were off. The knowledge of man and their idol had been removed and his ability to do his works were taken away. And this is what's happening with the false versions. Man's injecting his own noggin into the thing and the work of men's hands and tweaking and tinkering and collecting the money from those things God is not approving of that stuff. You say, oh, that's a stupid example. Is it? You say, that's a stretch to take it to the King James Bible. Is it? Remember what was in the Ark of the Covenant? The books of the law. God's preserved word. It's the same thing. God allows his word to be taken away when men no longer care. There's all kinds of silly arguments that uh, are posed when it comes to the King James Bible. But those arguments don't carry over into the other versions. Folks don't ever, you know, seem to care when a whole verse is taken away or something is completely changed around to deceive people, like the Matthew 7.14 verse from the New King James. Ah, that's sort of somehow forgiven. But boy, they want to go after the conies and the satyrs and the, the use of the term Easter, you know dopey arguments and uh, you know my series about King James simple thoughts um, I'm gonna bring up some of those hopefully as the Lord allows in the coming days or months or years <laughs> we don't have that much time gotta get it out this video is going too long so that's the end of this one thanks for watching